get through this the best I can. Uh, thank you for uh, for inviting me again. I've, I've been here. This is the second time I've spoken at this uh, at this particular lecture. The first time uh, I only gave the lecture that I'm giving this afternoon about bioidentical hormones, and usually that is my first lecture. So we'll try and fill in the blanks. Uh, <clears throat> as she told you, I'm an obstetrician gynecologist, and you probably are asking uh, what the heck is he kicking up here talking about uh, stress. Well, I will tell you that uh, I learned very quickly that uh, stress is relevant in whatever you do. And whatever especially you're in, uh, you're dealing with patients with stress. And the, the way that I got into this is that uh, I was so happy about learning about bioidentical hormones and learning about progesterone and measuring hormones. And I was just overjoyed. And I was uh, uh, primarily so excited because my wife had all of these issues that uh, were coming up. And uh, most of the time, uh, if she wasn't feeling good, it was my fault. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, that got me very interested in how, uh, how I was going to be able to survive in my marriage and uh, just in life. And so I started uh, to uh, understand bioidentical hormones and start using it with patients and everybody was, was doing well. But I was primarily focused on female hormones. And, and I had patients who would come in and they'd say, Doc, you know, I'm feeling better. You know, my periods are better, all these things are better. But I still have some fatigue and still a little nervous and irritable, <clears throat> still a little mental depression, a little trouble concentrating. You know, I'm not able to think as quickly as I used to. And, you know, for some reason I'm apprehensive. I'm not as, as daring as I used to be. And I have some weakness. And, uh, feelings of frustrations and cravings and uh, some vertigo, you know, it seems like the room is spinning sometimes. And I say, well, Ms. Jones, is that it? You told me you were feeling better. No, I have some lightheadedness and uh, uh, I have some insomnia. And you know that PMS, I, told, I know I told you I was better, but I still get that PMS every once in a while. You know, that's my husband says I'm still acting a little hormonal sometimes, even though I am, bad, uh, I am better. And, uh, you know, I have some headaches. And, you know, I have some muscle pains and spasms every once in a while. You, do you know anything about that, Doc? And I have some epigastric pain. You know, I, 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 I saw a commercial about the purple pill. Do you think the purple pill will help me, Doc? And, you know, what do you think about that purple pill? You know, they told me I, I could take it, but I'm not supposed to touch it. Is that, how, how do you do that? You know, uh, then I have some food and other allergies and, and some dyspepsia and indigestion and diarrhea and constipation. Somebody told me I had irritable bowel. Do you think I need, uh, you know, I have an irritable bowel? Do you think I need to go to the gastroenterologist? What do you think, Doc? Huh? And you're like, oh. <laughs> Who scheduled this patient right before lunch? Because <laughs> this lady is going to talk me to death. I'm not going to get to eat lunch. And so what do you do? What do you do in this scenario? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You order some tests. You order FSH, a serum thyroid, a CBC, a SMA7, a cholesterol, a ANA. You ever ordered all those tests on this patient? I don't know what happened there. You ever ordered any tests uh, like that on? What, how do I do this? Oh, don't do that. Oh, goodness. Yeah, let me just go right here. Yeah. Yeah, I touched something wrong. See, it keeps doing that to me. Just go next. Okay, I was trying to go backwards, but anyway. You want to have you that? ever done all those tests? This is good right here. Okay. Have you ever done all those tests on a patient who has these complaints? If you do all those tests on a patient who has those complaints, what are those tests going to show you? Nothing. They're going to show you absolutely nothing. So now, what are you going to do when you have to go back in the room? Because she's going to come back two weeks, and you know she's going to be early for her, her appointment. <laughs> <clears throat> she's not going to miss her appointment no matter what, okay? So she's going to be early. So then you're going to say, ma'am, I think, uh, you know, I, I can't find anything. And you know what she's going to do? She's going to say, but doc, don't you remember I told you I had that lightheadedness? And it, she's going to go through all of that stuff all over again. And then what are you going to do? Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to order an ultrasound, a CT scan, an upper GI, an endoscope, a laparoscope. <laughs> right? Now, what is that going to do for her? Nothing. Nothing. What is it going to do for you? It's going to do two things. It's going to get you out of that room. And two, it's going to allow you to reschedule her in six weeks instead of two weeks. So you get six <laughs> weeks that you don't have to see it. <clears throat> now, you're going to read all of those reports. And all of them are going to say she's absolutely 100% normal. And she's going to come back early for her next appointment. 
And so now what you have to do is you're going to have to practice visitors interrupt us in order to get her <laughs> out of your office, right? And visitors interrupt us means you got to write a prescription because she's not going to be happy until you write a prescription. Now, if you got all your laboratory tests are normal, all your imaging tests are normal, what in the heck are you going to write a prescription for? Exactly, Zoloft, yeah, exactly. Because if she's not depressed, you are. And so somebody's going to be taking some Zoloft. <clears throat> somebody's going to be taking some Zoloft connected with this case. All right, now, but here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, man, I got to do something. So you're going to look back over her labs, and you're going to get down on your knees and thank your creator that you found the missing link. And you know what that missing link is? Her cholesterol is 201. <laughs> I can write Lipitor. <laughs> Ma'am, here's your problem right here, that cholesterol 201. It's causing all your problems. Take this. But here's what I want you to do. I want to take you for at least six months. Don't call me. Don't email me. Don't come by the office for six months and let this Lipitor work, and it'll solve all your problems, okay? They just had in USA Today how we give placebos out, you know, half. Did y'all read that in USA Today? And so that's your placebo, your Lipitor. But anyway, you give her Lipitor. Now, you give her the Premarin because she's got some hormone disruption, and that can, you know, she's saying that she's got some hot flashes and all that stuff. And when, and when, you, when you hear my first lecture, I told you this is a little out, out of order. But anyway, you give her Synthroid because even though her TSH is normal, you're still going to give her a little Synthroid since she's saying she's fatigued. You give her the hydrocodone for her aches and pains. You give her the Prilosec because she wanted the purple pill. You give her the Norvast because she's got high blood pressure, the glucophage, glucophage because everybody's saying everybody's got insulin resistance, so you give them glucophage. You give them albuterol and Claritin because she has all these allergies. And you give her the Zoloft because she can't sleep. And, and again, she's depressing you, and she's depressed because you can't find anything wrong with her. So we give them Zoloft. Now, why do we give those drugs? Because they're popular. But the problem with popular thinking is that it doesn't require you to think at all. It's easier to do what other people do and hope that they thought it out. Because with that case, you don't, I mean, you're just giving what everybody else is giving. Everybody else is on Lipitor, everybody else is on an antidepressant, everybody else is on blood pressure medicine, and so you give it. You really have no diagnosis for Ms. Jones because all of your diagnostic tests came back normal. All right? Now, oh, I did this a little bit. Now, everybody knows, oh, well, no, I, 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 it won't let me go back. So, hold on, let's go here, previous. I'm trying to do this thing, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so what, what happens is, is that we don't have any positive test results, so we give patients these popular non-diagnoses. And let's, let's go through these, di these diagnoses. Chronic fatigue. How do you diagnose chronic fatigue? Huh? Babe, right? Yeah, well, well, here's how you diagnose chronic fatigue. A patient has to walk into your office and sit down in front of your desk, and she has to say, Doc, I am tired all the time. 